good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming for our second day in this number theory session. And today we are going to have five talks, two in the morning and three in the afternoon, all of them here in, at Zoom. And it's a pleasure for me to announce Professor Pedro Garcia Sanchez from Universidad de Granada in Spain. Uh, and he's an expert in topics related to combinatorics and number theory, including numerical semigroups. And he is one of the authors of the, the excellent book, Numerical Semigroups. Uh, the first time I, I met Pedro was in Levico Termi, and he was on, one of the organizers of the International Meeting on Numerical Semigroups. And I had a great op opportunity to present some results of my PhD thesis. Pedro, Pedro was really kind by receiving me there. Also, I could meet Shalom, Maria Brás, Clara Stokes, Professor Kunz, Professor Valdi, uh, Manuel Delgado, Aureliano Robles Perez, and some other colleagues. So those editions that I could attend were certainly to uh, some of the greatest opportunities of my career. So thanks a lot for providing this, Pedro. Uh, and today, Pedro will talk about cyclotomic polynomials, oh, uh, excuse me, uh, cyclotomic exponent sequence of numerical semigroups. Thanks for accepting the invitation, Pedro. Um, thank you to you. So uh, thank you very much for this kind introduction. Actually, um, you have a word in Portuguese that is called saudade. And when I listened to you, uh, when I was listening to you talking about the, our meetings on numerical semigroups and applications, it's it really uh, makes me sad that we we couldn't meet here. And I hope that we will be resume it uh, soon, uh, probably uh, next time. Or we don't know. It depends on the situation. Uh, but yes, it was it was really nice to have you there in these meetings. And also, uh, as you mentioned, uh, Shalom was also there and has been there in many of the, our meetings. Um, and you were not wrong about the title. It's actually about cyclotomic polynomials. But <laughs> yeah, the, um, the, um, the thing is that um, when you asked me about uh, how to, about talking a number theory session, I thought it could be good to, to present some, some work that is connected between, some connection between uh, number theory and numerical semigroups, because uh, most of my work is related to numerical semigroups or affine semigroups or in factorizations properties in, in these kinds of monoids. So, oh, this is a joint work with, uh, with uh, uh, Peter Morier. Uh, Peter is, is he's from Bonn. He was mentioned yes, yesterday in, in one of the talks. And also Alexandru, uh, also in Bonn now. Uh, and then uh, Andres uh, Herrera, he's in Oxford now, but he was, this project was started by Peter and then uh, Alexander and I uh, stepped in and did some progress in it. And finally, the results that um, we have accomplished are mainly because of the help of, of Andres. Um, so I will start uh, with, a, with a slight introduction to numerical semigroups. The, most of it is probably known to you because uh, Shalom yesterday gave a nice introduction of the topics and of the, con I mean, um, uh, uh, the concepts that, that I need to, to develop my, my talk today. So a numerical semigroup is just, uh, uh, it's just a bunch of integers that is closed under addition. They are non-negative and they have finite complement in the set of non-negative integers. I'm using N for the set of non-negative integers, okay? So uh, every numerical semigroup contains the zero, but it, this is not relevant at all, okay? So what is relevant is that uh, uh, up to a certain integer, every integer is in the semigroup. And this uh, integer here, I, I'm, I'm pointing it to with my mouse, is called the Frobenius number of S. There's a lot of literature, as Shalom uh, commented yesterday, uh, related to Frobenius number of numerical semigroups, a lot of papers, because there's no known for algebraic formula. And actually there's known to be no one algebraic formula for uh, the Frobenius numbers uh, the famous number of numerical semigroup in terms of its generators. Only some families escape to this, uh, let's say, disease. And for these families, there are formulas, but uh, sometimes deciding if, if a semigroup belongs to this family is even more costly than computing the, the, the frequency number itself. 
So every numerical semigroup is uh, finitely generated, say, uh, meaning that there's a finite subset of the semigroup so that any other element is a sum of these elements of uh, the subset. So there are linear combinations with no negative uh, coefficients. All the elements are linear co co uh, combinations of elements of, of, of these uh, system of generators with uh, non-negative uh, integer coefficients. And actually, there's a unique minimal system of generators. This is something uh, really nice that doesn't happen in groups in general or in vector spaces or whatever. You may have different bases for a vector space, but for numerical semigroups, you will, will have a unique minimal system of generators. And this is actually the, the uh, elements that can that are not sum of two other elements in the semigroup. And you can see that two uh, two mini two minimal generators cannot be in the same congruent class modulo the minimum post the minimal positive element in the semigroup, which is called the multiplicity. And so we know that this uh, minimal set of generators is finite, and at most will have as many elements as the least positive integer in the semigroup, which is called the the multiplicity. Um, okay, so I, this is what I need so far from uh, numerical semigroup theory. Then I will I will introduce more concepts that I will let la later. Uh, but now uh, most of the computations that we did are, are done with a package that we developed some time ago. Well, we keep developing it. Actually, we we're still working on it. We have been working on it for fifteen years, or fifteen, no, maybe more, seventeen years already. And so here you can define numerical semigroups in many ways. Here I'm defining numerical semigroup by its uh, system of generators. Then you can compute these small elements. Uh, it's what uh, Shalom called left elements. Or, or, so there are many notations about this. And these actually are the elements so that uh, from, this means that from 40 on every integer will be in the, in the numerical semigroup meaning that the largest gap will be 39, which is here, the Frobenius number, and the multiplicity is the smallest positive integer, and the gaps are uh, all these non-negative integers that are not in the numerical semigroup. All this can be computed with this package. And well, uh, the topic, the main topic of this uh, talk today is related to um, Hilbert series, the or generating function of a numerical semigroup. You just take um, a, a, a subset of the non-negative integers that is closed under addition and has a finite complement so that from any integer on, every integer will be inside your set. And then you can define this uh, infinite sum. It's a formal sum, okay? And this is called the Hilbert series related to the semigroup, okay? And it is well known, and many people have studied uh, this actually, this shape. It is well known that this is a quotient of the a polynomial, but this other polynomial. The polynomial in the denominator is just one, one minus x to the uh, minimal generators, and then you, you just uh, multiply them all together. And in the numerator, you, you have an, uh, a polynomial that is called, I mean, is uh, named in the literature, is named uh, KOS. So there, I mean, I think that there are papers from the 80s that already studied this polynomial. And you can actually compute it. And how do you compute it? You, you define a set of uh, simplicial complexes associated to an element in a numerical semigroup. So remember that any numerical semigroup has a unique minimal system of generators. So the faces of this simplicial complex are the subsets of your minimal generators so that you can subtract to your element a sum of these generators in a steel and you're still inside in the numerical semigroup. And you can define the, uh, the Euler characteristic as usual, the alternating sum of the, of the sizes of the faces. And then it, is, uh, it can be shown that the polynomial that was in the numerator of the Hilbert series is precisely the alternating sum, well, the sum of the uh, uh, Euler characteristic uh, of every of the elements uh, times x to the s. Yes, if you have a look at this element here, the Frobenius number plus the, number, the all the generators, when you add one to this element, all the subsets of A will be in the simplicial complex. So the Euler characteristics will be zero. So this is, this is indeed a polynomial of degree precisely 
the frequency number plus the, the, the sum of all the generators. Okay, uh, you can effectively compute these things using GAP. So you can compute these. Uh, this is the numerical semi group generator three, five, and seven. The small elements is three, five, and then six is in the semi group, seven is in the semi group, eight is in the semi group, and so on. Every time you get three in a row, since the multiplicity is three, every integer will be in, in the semi group. And, and, and so, for instance, you can, we can compute the shaded set of 15. Which is far above the uh, the Frobenius number, so it, it is actually all the subsets of the minimal generators. So I can compare here the shaded set with the combinations. Is the subset is the power set of, of three, five, and seven. And here is another example: 16. 16 means that uh, the shaded set of 16 is just a let's say a graph is composed composed with three vertices, three, five, and seven, and there are two edges connecting three and five and three and seven. Okay. And this is important because uh, actually when these graphs are, are, are disconnected, we, we get some extra information about the semigroup. And they're really, really important in our, in our work. And also when dealing with minimal presentations of numerical semigroups. So uh, these are called Betty elements. And so a Betty element is just an element in the semigroup so that the underlying graph that we defined before, we are just taking all the vertices with the generators that you can subtract from B and still be in the semi-group. And the edges are the pairs of generators so that you can subtract this, their sum and you will still be in the, in the semi-group. When the graph is non-connected, we get a lot of information from, uh, for a minimal presentation of the semi-group and also from, we will see from the, um, from the uh, Hilbert series of the numerical semi-group. Uh, uh, here's an example. Uh, 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 again, we are we are uh, taking the group three five seven, so the vertices will be eventually uh, will be uh, a subset of three five seven. In this case, we are taking fourteen, so um, uh, the shaded set is in this form. But you can also compute the graph associated to to this element to fourteen, and we have a vertices three five and seven because fourteen minus three is in the semi group, fourteen minus five is in the semi group. 14 minus seven is in the semi-group. And then there is no edge connecting three and seven because 14 minus 10 is four, which is not in the semi-group, it's a gap. There's no edge connecting five and seven because 14 minus 12 is two that is not in the semi-group. But there's an edge connecting five and three because 14 minus eight is six, which is in the semi-group, okay? And so this is the graph, it's a non-connected graph, okay, good. So recall that we uh, we had uh, an expression for our Hebrew series. We remember that the Hebrew series was running all over the elements in the in the, in the numerical semigroup, the semigroup taking x to all the elements in the semigroup, numerical semigroup, and then that take the formal series of 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 these things. Okay. So the numerator, if you take the numerator, and then you take the expansion as a formal series. What you will get is actually uh, another series, which is not the same as the Hilbert series, because you have some coefficients. And these coefficients are called the denumerant of the elements in the semigroup. And they are counting actually in many, in how many ways you can express every element in the numerical semigroups as expressions, as sums of the minimal generators. And uh, okay, again, this is some function that has been extensively uh, studied in the literature and there's no known formula for it in general. So uh, it counts, the, the numerant of, a, of an element in the semigroup, it counts in how many ways you can factor, you can express these elements in terms of the minimal generators. Okay, so there's still another, uh, let's say handy universal tool in numerical semigroups and Shalom, Talk about it yesterday is the upper set. The upper set was uh, invented, introduced by Aperi. And it is, if you take an, a non-negative, a non-negative element in a numerical semigroup, actually you can take any integer, but it is mostly used when 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 the integer is, is a non-zero integer in the semigroup, then the upper set is just the elements of, of the semigroup, so that when you subtract uh, n to this element in the semigroup is no longer in the semigroup. 
So you can you can actually think of upper sets as being the elements in the same group that are not in this principal ideal. Okay, so that whenever n does not occur in any factor in any expression of, of these elements. Okay. It is very well known that every element can be uniquely written in the following way is a multiple of n plus an element in the upper set of n. Usually, uh, as n, one chooses the multiplicity, but in other cases, you can choose uh, any other uh, non negative integer in the same group. But usually, is the upper set is always with respect to the, to the multiplicity. And due to this uh, nice expression, unique nice expression, the Hilbert series that was this formal series can be written in this way. It's actually a polynomial because this upper set is finite. There is only one element in the upper set in, the, in each congruent class group n. So you, you at, most have, at most have n elements in the upper set, actually n elements in the upper set. So this sum is a polynomial uh, times this uh, formal series, okay? So you have different ways to express the Hilbert series of a semi uh, of a numerical semigroup, one was this one, and this is another one. Okay, depending on what you want to know about the Hilbert series, you will use one way or the other way. Okay. Okay. So now, what what uh, we we go to gluings because this was one of the motivations to uh, for uh, cyclotomic polynomials to appear in 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 this context, and so we say that if we have two numerical semigroups. So in, 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 in numerical semigroup theory, you have many ways to construct new numerical semigroups from non-numerical semigroups. And whenever you do this, you are looking for uh, properties that are preserved on this under these operations. Or at least if you have, uh, let's say, easy tools that if you know some uh, of the notions that I that I said in, the, in my first slide, you could recover from the original operands uh, this uh, uh, these uh, notable elements in the new uh, numerical semigroup. In this case, gluing is a really handy operation, and it's been ex ex extensively used to to uh, to find examples for Gorian stain rings and and other kinds of uh, special singularities. Okay, uh, so if we have S1 and S2 two numerical semigroups, and we have A1 a non-minimal generator of S2 and S2. A2, a non-minimal generator of S1, and so that A1 and A2 are uh, relatively prime, then you can take all the multiples of S1 by A1, all the multiples of S2 by A2, and add them together, you get a new numerical semigroup. So this is actually a numerical semigroup because A1 and A2 are relatively prime, and so you will have a finite complement. And these, these first two conditions are not, not, actually they're not important. They're important because if the, you choose them in this way, what you get is that the minimal system of generators of S can be recovered for, from that of S1 and S2, just by multiplying them by A1 and N2, and then putting, yeah, putting them together. And from, from, it is not difficult to see how the upper set of A1, A2 behaves under a gluing. And so using this, this previous expression here, you can, you can see that if you have a gluing, the Hilbert series of a gluing has this form. So you can recover the, the Hilbert series of a gluing by looking at this Hilbert series of, the, of one of the factors in the gluing, okay? And also the Betty elements, that is the, uh, the elements whose graphs were not connected can also be easily recovered from those that occur in one, each part of the gluing. And this is nice because um, then the Hilbert series of semigroups that can be decomposed by gluing all the time, gluing and gluing and gluing until you reach the simplest thing that you can find in numerical semigroups, which is a copy of n, the set of non-negative integers. When you recover this, you start gluing together semigroups. What you, what you get is something that is called in, in numerical semigroup theory, complete intersections. And why are they called complete intersections? Because these semigroups, the semigroup ring is a complete intersection. It, it, is, it can actually be defined by the least possible number of, uh, let's say, relations uh, that you can, you can have. In this case, if the uh, number of minimal generators is E, the, uh, the number of minimal relations will be E minus one, 
Okay, so actually uh, the cardinality of a minimal presentation, it is the, uh, the embedding dimension, which is the cardinality of a minimal system of generator of S minus one. So uh, a completed instantiation can be defini defined in two ways. It's a, it's a numerical semigroup that has the minimal possible relations to define it, have it, or simply you can define it as a gluing of two completed instantiations and with, uh, let's say, uh, case base, this case, uh, the, the set of non-negative integers. If this happens, if this happens, then the Hebrew series has a pretty nice form in this way. It is just a product of things of the form one minus six to the something. In the numerator, you will get the petty elements. In the denominator, you will get the uh, generators, okay? And NC here uh, means the number of, of connected components of this graph. And this is important. Okay, so um, it's sometimes it's different. To, it's it's, it's uh, difficult to handle or deal with uh, formal uh, series. So it is sometimes better to have a polynomial that gathers uh, more or less the same information as, as the Hilbert series. Just uh, if you remember the, the the definition of the Hilbert series, which is here again, is copied again. Up to one integer, we know that all the integers will be in the same group. So if, if we take the Hilbert series and then we subtract x times the Hilbert series, this will become a polynomial, actually of degree the, the Frobenius number plus one. Okay, and and so in this case, if you take this polynomial here, which is one minus six to the Hilbert series, is actually a polynomial. And if you look at this expression here, all all integers that are non-negative are either a gap. Of the semigroup or an element in the semigroup, this is just what this addition is telling you. Then the polynomial that I, I'm defining in this way has this expression is one plus x minus one times the product, the sum of x to the all the gaps, that is all the integers, all the non-negative integers that are not in the semigroup. And this is what we call the polynomial associated to the semigroup. So there's a very nice case. If we recover, recover our, our formula for completed sections, then we have that uh, for completed sections, the, the polynomial associated to the semigroup has this form. It's just a bunch of one minus x to the something, okay? So, so all its roots will be in the unit circle. And since all the roots are in the unit circle by Kronecker's theorem, this is a product of cyclotonic polynomials. So one natural question is when a polynomial will have, is a, a, a semigroup will have its associated polynomial uh, as a product of cyclotonic polynomials. If a semigroup has a polynomial that is a product of cyclotonic polynomials, then we say that the, the semigroup itself is cyclotonic, okay? So we know, we know from this expression here, that every complete intersection is then a cyclotomic numerical semigroup. But we don't know what happens with the converse. And actually this project started in uh, maybe seven years ago and we still don't have a complete answer. But we have some numerical and some partial results, some numerical evidence and some partial results that are the ones that I'm going to, to explain today. So the numerical evidence is the following. So we say that a numerical semigroup is symmetric if this, it has as, as many gaps as as many non-gaps below, I mean, uh, below the, uh, the, the, the Frobenius number. So this is this results in the following, in this following statement. For every integer, either the integer is, is in S of the Frobenius number minus the integer is in S. There's a symmetry below the Frobenius number. So it happens, it is really nice. This was something that uh, Peter Marie discovered in his first uh, work on, on, on cyclotomic um, numerical semigroups. It is really nice to, to see that uh, if the semigroup is, uh, numerical semigroup is symmetric, then the polynomial will be a palindrome. It will be self-reciprocal, meaning that if you take the, the coefficients of the polynomial, you can read them from left to right or from right to left, it's, it's the same polynomial. And, and then we can check among, all symmetric polynomials up to a certain uh, Frobenius number and check if their uh, related polynomials are cyclotomic or not. So we first implemented uh, 
uh, a procedure to decide if a, if a polynomial was a product of cyclotomic polynomials. And then we were able to prove that up to uh, for minus number 71. Why 71? Oh, uh, this is because it's the time we had. It takes hours to, to do this, days in some cases. So at least we have some evidence. Up to for minus number 79, uh, every uh, cyclotomic numerical semigroup is complete in section. Go. Cool. Okay, so um, uh, we in our first in our first work we started to look at this uh, decomposition of any polynomial. Uh, so every every time we have a polynomial uh, with with integer coefficients, actually it doesn't have to be a polynomial; it can, it can be a follow uh, So that if f one is one. So the value on, on one is one. Then there exists an expression of this form. F can be expressed as a, as a, as a um, in principle, infinite or finite product of one minus six to the D to the E to the D. Just why this? Uh, we were looking to, for, for this expression because it's quite similar to the one that we have already in those polynomials that come from completed sexual numerical semigroups. So every polynomial that, uh, whose value in one is one can be expressed uh, in this way. And the exponents, uh, ED, are what we call the exponent sequence of this polynomial. In the case of, a, of a, um, or in the literature, I think that they are known as sweet coefficients. In the case of a, a semigroup polynomial, we, we will know them, we will name them uh, the exponent sequence of, of S. So when I say exponent sequence of S, I'm taking the, semi, the polynomial associated to the semigroup. I am expressing it in this way, and I'm taking the exponents of one minus six to the D all the time. Okay. So uh, how difficult is to compute these exponents? Well, uh, you, uh, if you look at the, at, the, at the paper that I will, I will refer to at the end of the, the talk, there are many ways to do this, but one way is this one. So if you take a polynomial like the one I, 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 I commented before, so f, f1 is one with uh, integer coefficients, then if you take the roots, then the sum of the, uh, the uh, inverses of the powers of the k powers of the, integer, uh, of the roots of this polynomial, these are integers and they, there's a uh, recurrence relations be between this and the exponents can be computed by using this recurrence relation and by using the Mavius function. So you actually can compute them. And, and this is quite fast. I mean, it takes nothing to compute them. Okay. Doesn't, actually, it doesn't, doesn't depend on the roots themselves. You don't have to compute the roots. It depends on the coefficients themselves. themselves. Okay. And again, there's, there's another uh, proof that is a constructive proof that is uh, solving congruencies step by step. And you can also do this. Okay. And well, uh, if you do this uh, approach, so solving the the um, the congruence uh, degree by degree, then is this function here. If you do the approach of the recurrence relation that was shown in the previous slide, you're using the the with coefficients. So there are actually there are two ways to compute this in in the package numerical semigroup, and the first one checks all the time if uh, the computation that you are doing at this degree is exactly the polynomial the, the original polynomial. So it takes longer. So the second one is faster. So for instance, in the case of a numerical semigroup in four, six, and nine, we will have this expansi expansion in this way. And so the exponent sequence will be the following. One is always one. The first element is one. This minus one corresponds to four. This minus one corresponds to six, which is the second generator. This minus one corresponds to nine, which is the other generator. And the other ones in the sequence are the Betty elements. Okay, are those elements whose graph is not connected? Okay. Well, this is nice because this one is a complete intersection, and I know it has a really nice behavior. But in general, the coefficients may explode. Like in this really silly example, is three, five, seven. Remember that this is the semigroup uh, zero, three, five, and and then any integer, any integer greater than five is in the semigroup. And if you look at the exponent sequence, it explodes. And we actually do not know when it, when it explodes or not. And of course, you can see that it, here you have minus ones here that corresponds with three, five, and seven. But you have other, other minus ones that you don't know why they are there. OK? 
or even some positive integers over here that should correspond to the Betty elements, but there are many more than Betty elements has this uh, numerical semi group, okay? Because the number of Betty elements in the numerical semi group is always finite. Okay, so um, uh, just going back to the definition, remember that the exponent sequence was, the, was a set, set of exponents in this expression of the polynomial associated to the numerical semigroup, which was defined in this way, okay? And so what we know, what we know, we were able to prove just by uh, cutting the formal series at a certain degree, at an appropriate degree, is that E1 is always one. This is easy, that, that, that ED is zero for every gap in the, that is not one, every gap different from one. So the uh, exponent will be zero. So for every minimal generator, we will have that, that ED is minus one, okay? And also, also that the exponent will be zero for those elements that can be written uniquely, uniquely as a sum of the minimal generators. So, so those having a denumerant equal to one, okay? This is what we know, and this is not difficult to prove, actually. It's just looking at the Hilbert series and then, uh, and then cut it modulo, uh, uh, d plus one when we are going to study ED, okay? X to the d plus one. Okay, um, so what we, we already know what happens in the, uh, let's say, uh, lower layers with respect to the uh, ordering that you can always define on a numerical semigroup. So the, the good thing would be to know what happens above these layers. So I, I, I'm going to uh, recall something that is also very common in, in uh, numerical semigroup theory or in general in and, and commutative monoids, can selected commutative monoids, is that whenever you have one of these monoids, it, it induces an order. In this case, we say that A is smaller than B if and only if B minus A is an element of S. Sometimes, sometimes this is called A divides B. Because if you look at, at the X, uh, X to the something, this is actually division, okay? In the semigroup ring. So this, uh, this is uh, an ordering that is very, very, very commonly used because of the implications that it has in the, in the uh, numerical, uh, in the semigroup ring associated to S and, those, and thus it is commonly used in, in algebraic uh, geometry. Okay, so we have the, our uh, exponent sequence. We know the values when we have a gap, so an element that is not in the semigroup, when we have a minimal generator, and then we, when, whenever we have uh, element, elements with the numerant equal to one. So what happened with those elements that are minimal with respect to this relation and do not have a unique expression? Well, one can somehow easily prove, well, it takes a, a, a bit of time to, it, one, one can prove that the, 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 um, the, the exponent plus one is, is actually the number of different expressions that's, that this element has in terms of the minimal generators. And in this case, it is really important to mention that in this case, this is actually the number of non-connected components of the graph associated to this element in the numerical semigroup. So in the case of the minimal elements in the numerical semigroups, having more than one factorization, having one, more than one expression in terms of the minimal generators, the exponent, the corresponding exponent plus one will be the number of expressions of this element in terms of the minimal generators, which is in this, at the same time, the number of connected components of, uh, of the graph associated to this element. And all these factorizations are isolated, meaning that there's no minimal generators that appears in two different factorizations. Okay. Now, we, we could have a look at what happens over the minimal elements, okay? But first I will recap what, what I've said so far. So we, we want now to see what happens. We know already what happened with gaps, with minimal generators, and with those elements having uh, a unique expression, okay? And so, so I I'm, I'm remember that those having a unique expressions, the exponent was zero. So I will stick on these elements so that the exponent is non-zero. So this removes the gaps. So all these elements are in the semigroup. And this also removes the elements that uh, have a unique factorization. 
Okay, so so actually um, this set is included in the set of uh, elements in the semigroup that are not minimal generators and with with at least two factorizations. So we were able to prove that the set of minimal elements of with respect to the order of the set of petty elements of the semigroup is precisely the set of minimal elements of these exponents. Okay, this uh, beautiful A or uh, calligraphic A. A. So, um, and actually in this case, in this case, the exponent is precisely the denumerant, which is the number of non-connected components. Okay, uh, the idea now is to, now we are in the first level, minimal elements, and we want to try to see what happens in upper levels. Uh, in general, we know nothing, but, but if we have an element so that whenever we look down, when we look down, we have that all the elements that are below are totally ordered. So to say in a numerical semigroup, when we have an element and we, lo we look at the, all the elements that are between this element and zero are totally or ordered. There's only one path in the Hasse diagram associated to this ordering in the numerical semigroup. There's one path from this element to the zero, then we can say something, okay? And so our, our actually what, what we have is that our results can apply in this special case that, that when we have forests. So whenever we have an element in the Betty set in the Betty elements of, of, of our numerical semigroup or Betty degrees or in our uh, calligraphic E, that means that every element is, is, is joined zero to this or, or to the minimal elements by a single path, there's no two ways to go from this element to a minimal element, then we can apply the results that I'm, uh, I'm going to introduce in the, in the next slide, okay? So first I define this thing. So this, this uh, down arrow X is all the elements that are below my the given element. And U of X is those elements for which there's a path below this element. I mean, everything is totally ordered below this element, okay? Uh, we thought that this were really rare, but it doesn't seem to be the case uh, in, in terms of completing sections, okay? Okay, so um, what we were able to prove is that uh, those elements that for which there's a one path from this element to a minimal element with respect to this um, order induced by the semigroup are the same in terms of the minimal elements and in terms of the exponents that are non-zero, okay? And, and are non-minimal generators, okay? And then in this case, we were able to prove uh, that actually the exponent of this element is precisely the number of component, the connected components of the uh, corresponding graph minus one. And how we were able to prove this? We were able to prove this by looking at the factorizations every time we go from one element to the element that is just above it. We were able to prove that all the connected components become a single component in the new element and then some isolated components. And actually the number of isolated components, isolated factorizations are, is precisely the exponent of this element. And in this way, we were able to prove this. So actually there's a connected component and some isolated factorizations. And this happens whenever we jump up and there's only one element above the element that we are studying. So we, if we have a Betty element and there's only one Betty element above it, we can apply this result. If there's another Betty element above it, then we, we can about, uh, apply this result. And this as many times as, as we want. Any time you jump to another level, all the factorizations become a new connected component in the new element, plus some extra factorizations that are isolated in the sense that no, they don't have a common minimal generator in these expressions. And this isolated, the number of these isolated factorizations is precisely the exponent. This was a really nice result. And, 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 and it applies so only in some cases. For instance, in this numerical semigroup, the semigroup generated by 10, 15, 16, 17, and 19, uh, we can apply our result to this layer, which is, this is our, the minim, these are the minimal generators. We know that the exponents will be precisely the number of factorizations minus one. And it also will apply to 48 because 48, if you see, there's only one path 
from 48 to one minimal uh, uh, generator. So it's actually there's a, there's a line. But if you go to 57, the elements below below 57 are not totally ordered. So we cannot apply wow well result for, for 57. And it would be nice to know what happens. Actually, the problem here is when you have like a, like a diamond, okay? You have one Betty element here, two Betty elements, and another Betty element above it, or, or a triangle going, going up. We don't know how the factorizations of 57 are related to those of 30 and 32, or at least how the connected components are. Okay, and so we can we can we have that uh, 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 UBT will be uh, this uh, the minimal elements plus forty eight, and this case is the same for those have a non-zero uh, exponent in the exponent sequence, and in all of them, the the value of of the exponent is the number of connected components minus uh, minus one. Okay, so uh, uh, this. Uh, allowed us to solve our problem for the special case when um, our, let's say our calligraphic E was a tree, a forest, a forest or a tree. Or, or a, uh, in this case, we, we, we can say that uh, a numerical semigroup is cyclotomic if and only if it is a complete intersection. But of course, it doesn't solve the, the conjecture. Remember that we want to prove that every cyclotomic uh, numerical semigroup is a completed intersection, and we are really far from um, from having a, a a good solution for this. It, it, it is also, this is only a partial solution and, and quite a, a nice partial solution, but it's still uh, quite a, a small number of numerical semigroups that that will have this property in general. Um, okay, so um, this here is an example: uh, the semigroup generated by, by uh, 8, 12, 18, and 25. Then the uh, semigroup polynomial, uh, the, uh, the semigroup polynomial associated to, to S has this form, and thus it's a product of cyclotomic polynomials. The Betty elements are precisely the exponents that appear here. And if you arrange the Betty elements uh, with respect to the order induced by S, they are arranged in this form, and this is a tree. Okay, And in this case, S is a, a complete intersection is also of course, cytotomic. And OK, our results apply to, to several families that have been uh, widely studied in the literature, which are um, uh, numerical semigroups with a single Betty element. They, they are like flowers, actually. Or those semigroups that are a bit divisible, uh, meaning that uh, the set of uh, Betty elements can be ordered by division. So every, uh, every element, uh, Betty element divides another one, and so on. And they are totally ordered by divisibility, and this if this happens, then the um, the elements whose exponents are non-zero will have the same property. Okay, and also the same ha happens with uh, the what we we call a Betty sorted uh, numerical semigroups are those elements uh, for which the Betty elements are uh, totally ordered with respect to the uh, so instead of a forest we have a line. Okay, uh, which is a special case of forest. And this is this happens if and only if the uh, the elements of the semigroup whose exponents are non-zero and are not minimal generators are also totally ordered with respect to the same order. And in all these in all these cases, uh, uh, these semigroups are, are known to be complete section. And in, in some cases, they are what 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 is known in the literature uh, telescopic or free or even free for all the arrangements of the minimal generators. And uh, well, um, here's some reformulation of the conjectures. What we have seen so far is that, um, remember that our original conjecture with C1 is uh, we want to prove that uh, S is cyclotomic if and only if is S is a complete section. And C2 is F is cyclotomic if it's a semitomic. Then D will be a minimal generator if and only if uh, its, its corresponding exponent is negative. Right? It happens for, for completed sections. We do not know what happens in, in the second atomic case in general. Uh, well, actually, for the, for the case of the forest, we know that it is true. Okay. Uh, the the third conjecture is if S is cyclotomic, then for every element in the Betty elements, the exponent will be precisely the number of connected components minus one. Okay. And this, this actually happens in completed sections. But we don't know what happens in for cyclotomic numerical semigroups in general. And actually, 
If C2 and C3 hold, then C1 holds. And so it would be nice to, uh, to be able to prove C2 or C2 or C3. And then if we are able to prove both, we will be able, we will be able to prove uh, C1, our original conjecture. And uh, just to uh, just to finish my my, my talk, uh, I want to mention that um, actually this the content of this talk is mostly in this uh, link archive, which uh, actually ha ha happily was accepted yesterday, and it will appear in the Script Mathematics Journal. And thank you very much for uh, for your attention. Muito obrigado. Let's put this up. Thanks a lot, Pedro, for this nice talk. And congratulations for the exception uh, of, of your paper. So- It's a coincidence, it was yesterday. <laughs> <So> yes, <laughs> it's really. It, has been, it, was, it was a long time and the, and the, the referee process because it's a 27 or 30 pages uh, long paper is, uh, is uh, I, I mean, I, I must confess that I think a poor referee had to, to read this, this paper, <laughs> quite technical. <laughs> but I'm really grateful for the referee to have, have been able to read it all and, and check everything. So it's, really if, nice. If, uh, if, if the referee is in the audience, I'm really grateful. I must confess that <laughs> <laughs> the referee was able to read it. Uh, so um, I'm going to, to ask for the participants, if there are any questions or comments. Um, uh, I, I would have a, a question. Please, Shalom. Can I? Yeah, Please. Uh, thank, you. thank you very much, Pedro, for the, for the wonderful talk. Um, uh, just out of, out of curiosity, uh, w when you fix the, the genus, um, what is the proportion of uh, Complete intersection numerical semigroups in, in that level. Uh, how, how does it evolve? Ah, uh, well, it is it is really um, small, I would say. Uh, so complete intersections are symmetric, and symmetrics themselves are not so many among uh, the total, but complete complete intersections are even less. Uh, if you want to have to have a look at some graphics. There's something funny because you know that uh, genus, when you increase the genus, the number of numerical semigroups increases, like the Fibonacci sequence, as, as, as uh, this is Maria Bras conjecture, right? And, and it was proof, you mentioned yesterday the result by side that asymptotically we know that it's true, but we don't know that it's true for every genus because we don't know uh, when this asymptotically bound is starts because we, don't, we cannot count that too. Uh, maybe the, the, the largest we know is uh, 71, if I remember well, right? And, and then uh, uh, there's your colleagues, Iver, working on this topic also. But in, in the case of symmetric numerical semigroups and, and, and completed sections and free and telescopic, the, the curve is not increasing all the time. It's every six, it goes down and then goes up and then goes down. But keeps increasing, but, but like, um, like a tendency of going up and down. And this is really funny because we don't know why. Why six? Oh, <laughs> very interesting. We have a paper, I will send you the paper with Abdallah, I see you know him. We have a paper when we have some graphics, when some graphs are showing the number of numerical, completed in sections, telescopic, free, and compared to symmetric and so on. Yeah, okay, yeah. thanks. The proportion is uh, not so big. Uh, I would have a, a, another question. I, I'm not sure I understood. Uh, did you say that sometimes this exponent sequence is finite, sometimes it's not, and you don't know when? Or well, actually, actually, it's finite. If it's finite, then our uh, by definition, our our numerical semigroup will be cyclotomic. Yeah. For completed sections, it's always finite. Okay. okay. But in general, you, we don't know. We don't know. Uh, even if when, when, it, when it is finite, it's cyclotomic. But when, when it is not finite, we don't know how the coefficient, the exponents behave. Sometimes they explode and very and very fast, and we don't know why. And so we have a partial results on the paper. You can have a look. When we know that in some cases it will explode, but not 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 in general. So this is something also unknown. What is the behavior in the non in the non cyclotomic case? What is the behavior of the exponents? Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Shalom. Actually, one of the one of the key points, uh, Shalom, is that remember that the numerical semigroup can be given in many ways. You can give the gaps, 
You can give the minimal generators. You can give, give the small elements, so the elements that are below the conductor. You can have many ways to describe a numerical semigroup. This is just an alternative way to describe the numerical semigroup by the exponents of this polynomial, exponents associated to this polynomial. The bad thing is that this, this sequence is infinite in, in, in most of the cases. But it would be and nice can... to, uh, to, to, to derive properties of the semigroup from the, uh, the sequence. That's the idea. Yeah, I was going to ask. Yeah, right. Thanks. Thanks, Shalom. Are there other questions? May I, may I ask you a okay? question, Pedro? Mm -hmm. And when you were looking for uh, those conditions, you used the, the Frobenius number for, for computing the, the numerical semigroups. And so you can uh, verify if, if it's complete intersection, if it's cyclotomic and so on. Uh, is there a, a reason for that? Or it was just because Frobin when you fix a Frobenius number, you have a, a finite number of numerical semigroups. Uh, for instance, if you fix a multiplicity, can you probably uh, say something about those, those relations? Well, in this case, I will, I will tell you why. In, mm -hmm. And it's a bit related to, to, um, to this conjecture that has been, uh, has been um, uh, sought so, uh, so, uh, for so many, many years already, is that this is increasing when you increase the genus the number of semigroups increases, like the Fibonacci sequence. Mm -hmm. But uh, the thing is that we have um, plenty of algorithms to compute, for instance, say certain families, if you are giving me the Frobenius number. So if you give me the Frobenius number in, in a symmetric numerical semigroup, then the genus will be the Frobenius number plus one divided by two. Mm -hmm. This is fixed. So fixing the genus or the Frobenius number in the, is the same for symmetric numerical semigroups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But we have fast algorithms to compute symmetric numerical semigroups or irreducible pseudo-symmetric or symmetric numerical semigroups with a given Frobenius number. And this is why we were looking for this because every cyclotomic numerical semigroup must be symmetric. And Perfect. for us computing symmetric numerical semigroups is fast. So we can go up to 71 in one or two days, no problem. If we had to do this with this computer for general semigroups, it would be impossible. I, could, I couldn't do it in years. You need a supercomputer to do that. And, and Shalom knows about it because he has worked with uh, some, some people, some colleagues of him has been working on it. It's also Maria Brass. You need a supercomputer to do this. And you cannot store them. If you store them up to Frovinus number 60 something, 63, 64 is 14 terabytes. Mm -hmm. It's impossible to store them. You just count them. <laughs> and then at the same time you count them, you should probably you have to check the, the property and keep going. So so for us, restricting to, to symmetric numerical semigroups was a good a good choice, and, and we were able to to, to 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 tell what I said in this slide. This is the reason because it, for us it's easier to compute. So we also have proper uh, some uh, functions to compute complete intersections with a certain genus or or free semigroups with a certain genus and so on. And then we can do test over this. Uh, and this is for us, because if you fix the multiplicity, you, can, you don't fix uh, anything else. You have infinitely many. But with fixed genus, it, you have finitely many. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's Perfect. the idea. OK, Pedro, thanks a lot. Uh... And, and, and again, uh, I, yeah, this is related to something that uh, Shalom mentioned yesterday in, in his talk. If you fix the multiplicity, what you're doing is cutting the Kunst polyhedron by a, by a hy hyperplane. Mm -hmm. And then you will have certain points in this polyhedron, and you can also do things over there. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. okay. Uh, thanks a lot for, for your answer. Uh, are there any questions? Yes, I would have a question. Please. Uh, does the technique of uh, truncate in the, the Hilbert series work also for um, uh, in order to find the exponent of uh, the elements that have a small denumerant, let's say two. Well, actually, um, the the the, uh, the idea of truncating uh, uh, up to a, a certain degree worked fine only in the cases that I've mentioned. I mentioned that whenever you have a um, a line below this element that jumps in in the um, in the exponents, either in the exponents or in the Betti elements. Otherwise, we don't have any clue. 
because the, even in this case, the combinatorics is, is, a, is a bit um, special, but in, in general, we don't know how to do it. Yeah, so we, we, we cannot, uh, it would be nice to, to know how, how it behaves. And this is actually related to the thing I said. Every time we have a diamond or something of the sort, uh, a diagram that is not a line of the elements that are below your element, then you, we cannot say nothing. So the techniques that we are using only apply in this case. Okay, thank you. So this is indeed this is saying okay we all we know almost nothing. We are not at the, we are not as we were at the beginning, but still <laughs> we are we are and we there's a lot of the work to be done. Okay, so let's thank the speaker. Emma, uh, did you say something? No, yes. No, no, because we are almost near 12. Uh, the yes. next talk starting. So, uh -huh. <laughs> so, well, congratulations, Pedro. It's a wonderful talk. It's a mystery. Thank you thank you, you very have very so many points of view, of different points of view. And everyone, every time you start a new point of view, you have a, a thousand more questions to <laughs> it's well, incredible in this case, subject. In this yeah. case, it's almost depressing because it, it has, <laughs> it's been years without a, without a positive answer until now. So, it's, uh, well, uh, uh, may, may, may I do some advertising, uh, Mateus? Sure. Uh, sure. We have a new book. <laughs> wow, <laughs> really nice. Numerical semi-groups and applications. Yeah, and now we have this second edition was edited uh, a um, couple of years ago, or yeah, last year was last mm -hmm. year. Mm -hmm. uh, spring here also. Uh, nice, wow. Really nice. We have a look at um, yeah. yeah. Congratulations. So, no, we have a chapter on ideals also, and some contributions from from Marco Dana, and so it uh, mm -hmm. is all not only numerical symmetries but also some applications, and and we talk about the shaded sets that I mentioned here, the graphs, factorizations, and coding theory, and other things related to numerical symmetry. Really? Many of them were mentioned yesterday by Shalom. Really nice. Congratulations, Pedro. <laughs> good, good for our commun community. <laughs> uh, so let's thank you, thank you, Pedro, for this nice talk.